some overnight news. The Albuquerque Fire Department was able to knock down a small fire at a home in southeast Albuquerque. This happened about 2, 2 30 this morning at a home on Sierra Drive off of Cole. Now, crews on the scene tell us it was a small fire and that they were able to quickly put it out. There are reports that it was started by a family fight of some sort, but the details are unknown. Well, now to our other top story right now. That Now that Levi Chavez is a free man acquitted of murder, can he be a police officer once again? I'll tell you, it is possible because we have learned he may be trying to get his law enforcement certification back. Remember, APD fired Chavez and his certification was stripped after he was charged with murdering his wife, Tara. Levi always said she'd killed herself, and this week a jury found him not guilty. A law enforcement academy board member tells us that Chavez has a meeting set up for the middle of next month, but even if he is recertified, Chavez's attorney, David Cerna here, does not expect him to get another police job. However, Mr. Cerna does think that Chavez may sue APD for firing him. He is certainly uh, due to be made whole. Uh, I'll talk with him about that. We haven't had that conversation yet, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't go on the offensive. David Cerna did not say how much money Chavez might go after, but he does say Chavez and his family owe a lot of money. A drunk driver who killed the two-year-old Albuquerque boy will spend six years in prison. My son was perfect in my eyes, but he was taken from me ten months ago by a careless man in a speeding truck who was two times the limit drunk. Mariano Salas is the man's name, and he killed my son. That is the family of the victim speaking out in court. Now, last August, Mariano Salas crashed into a car that was carrying little Vicente Griego off of Coors Boulevard near Quail. Now, Vicente was in the back seat and suffered a serious brain injury. He was taken off of life support a week later. Yesterday, a judge sentenced Salas to six years in prison for DWI and vehicular homicide. He apologized to the Griego family in court and said he would start speaking to high schools about the dangers of drunk driving. Well, here is an odd story at 533. The victim of a sex crime is now arrested, accused of helping the man who hurt her. Bernalillo County Sheriff's detectives have been looking for this man, James Denaleski. He claimed to be living at a home in Albuquerque, but whenever they would go to check on him, it seemed like they always just missed him. So then back in 1995, Donaleski was convicted of lewd and lascivious acts with a minor under 14. Deputies say the victim was his stepdaughter and they tried to go see Donaleski eight times recently. After that, detectives set up surveillance on him, eventually tracking him to Elephant Butte where they arrested him. And he's not the only one in trouble this morning. Deputies also arrested his stepdaughter, same one person who was the victim, saying she helped him avoid the law. And she would notify her stepfather and let him know that, you know, they did put a flyer on the door and that's how he was calling back in to our uh, sex offender registration unit. The stepdaughter here, we're blurring her face, has been charged with conspiracy. Donaleski will be brought back to Albuquerque where he could wind up in jail. Well, people in Albuquerque are remembering Trayvon Martin, the unarmed Florida teenager shot and killed by a neighborhood watchman. On Saturday, George Zimmerman was acquitted of both second-degree murder and manslaughter. The jury believed he acted in self-defense. The verdict has sparked protests across the country, some peaceful, some not. At a vigil last night at Albuquerque's Baton Memorial Park, people held candles and signs in support of Martin's friends and family. And you know, George Zimmerman was found not guilty thanks to Florida's stand your ground law. New Mexico has a similar law that says if you are facing a threat, you are not legally obligated to retreat. Damon Fay teaches concealed carry classes. Now he says you don't have to back down from a threat. However, he says deadly force should only be used when there's an immediate threat that you didn't bring upon yourself. That is the presumption that you're not the primary aggressor and you're not in somewhere you should not be. Uh, in other words, somebody else's home or uh, going after them uh, in an attack and then claim self-defense. That doesn't work. Now that law will be tested as the district attorney's office decides if Donnie Pearson should be charged in the shooting death of Jonathan Mitchell. This is a recent case stemming here in Albuquerque. Mitchell was basically spotted outside a neighbor's home in Albuquerque with a gun. Pearson went looking for Mitchell who had walked home. Mitchell then fired off a shot from his driveway as Pearson pulled up. A few seconds later, Pearson fired back, killing him. 
It looks like Rio Rancho will be getting a new college. The University of New Mexico and CNM are working together to build a branch college that will focus on science, technology, engineering, healthcare, and math. The two schools have been talking about this for three years. Now it's much closer to reality. They're designing the new school as we speak. The plan is to build it next to the campus. UNM and CNM already have in Rio Rancho. The universities have not said when the new school will open. A group of high school students from here in New Mexico now getting a chance to take a closer look at how investigators fight online crime. They got to visit the Regional Computer Forensics Lab in Albuquerque. The officers from any agency can take thumb drives, cell phones, computers, and stuff like that there to have evidence extracted from it. The students are either high schoolers or incoming freshmen at UNM, and they're all thinking about a career in computer science. It's opened many new fields. I've gotten and interesting, uh, interesting stuff from all sorts, or all sides of computer science, like forensics, which is what we're doing here, and uh, coding, which I haven't had much experience with, but I'm learning a ton. This case on. Students also got to go to the forensics lab as part of a summer internship. Well, you can almost hear the hardcore shoppers revving their engines this morning. The discount retailer Gordman's is opening its first New Mexico store this morning on Albuquerque's west side. It's located off of Coors near Highway 528. Gordman's, which is based in Omaha, Nebraska, will open up a second store in Albuquerque in September at Coronado Center. It's a great place to get uh, cheap things for the home. They have good go. discounts on, like little decorations, lamps, and stuff you put on tables and hang on the walls. Very good for that. And they have clothes, too. Got to go check that out. All right, have you noticed the extra pain at the pump recently? Yeah, Ouch. guilty. I think yeah. we all have. I bet if you filled up recently, prices are up. Get this, 15 cents in just the last week. So we sent News 13's David Romero outside to go find out why. So what is it, David? Well, Matt, you, of course, you know, this is the driving season where everybody loves to be out on the road. Now, you factor in the high demand to fill up those cars that are out driving. That, coupled with a little bit of maintenance on some key critical refineries, and, of course, that's why you might be breaking the bank to fill it up at the pump. But it may not be that bad for that long. Now, some experts say there may be some relief in sight. And, of course, AAA fuel gauge report shows that gas has jumped at least 15 cents within just one week. Now, that's still not putting the country at the highest of highs, which we saw earlier this year in February when the national average was about 378. Right now we're at 365 nationwide. AAA says New Mexico is paying between 354 and 363 a gallon and that's pretty evident on the uh, sign at the gas station behind us. Now if you're looking for the best prices in town, GasBuddy.com shows the cheapest prices are at the club member stations like Costco and Smith's and the cheapest one is at the Costco on the west side with the gas around 318 a gallon. If you can't fill up there, the cheapest non-member station is in town he is at the Circle K. That's near Louisiana and Pino Avenue, and that's at 335 a gallon. Now, for those of you watching us up in Santa Fe, you're going to be paying for uh, about the same for the cheapest price in town. That's about 335, pretty comparable to what it is here. That's at the Murphy Express. That's on Cerritos Road and near Las Soledas Drive. Matt, back to you. All right, thank you, David. At least we can save a couple cents with that good information. And again, experts expect another 10 cent jump in price in the next couple of weeks. Four things taper off for a while just in time for the Labor Day weekend.